Lady Gaga has been in the music industry for more than a decade and has been killing the game every time she steps on stage. Her singles Just Dance and Born This Way were pivotal in the world of pop and electronic dance hits. One can even go as far to say as Gaga was one of the world's most successful debut artists in this century so far. Can anyone even remember a time when Gaga didn't exist? Probably not, because her popularity has been so consistent. Anyone that doesn't know her past can say that Gaga's fame just happened, possibly out of thin air, like many young artists. But this isn't the case. You have to know all the struggles, the put-downs, and everything she went through to become the Lady Gaga we have in our world today. Before she was the influential, award-winning, iconic Lady Gaga, she was Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanata. Stephanie, born on March 28th of 1986 at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City, to Cynthia Louise, or Cindy Bissett, and Joseph Germanata. Both her parents have Italian ancestry as well as some French-Canadian roots. The pop culture genealogist, Chris Child, found that Stephanie and Madonna, yes, the Madonna, are ninth cousins once removed, dating back to the French farmers who came to Quebec in the 1600s. But let's get back to the century at hand. Stephanie lived with her first-generation Italian-American parents and her younger sister, Natalie, in a duplex apartment on the Upper West Side in Manhattan. She grew up as Catholic and had become very open about her religion and devotion to God, both through her lyrics and through her interviews. At just three years old, Stephanie learned how to play piano, and by five, she was proficient and even knew how to create songs by ear. Seeing her daughter excel, the Germanatas enrolled Stephanie in a creative arts camp, and she attended the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute for 10 years. From the age of 11 years old, Stephanie went to Covenant of the Sacred Heart. She ended up landing lead roles as Adelaide in Guys and Dolls and Philia in A Funny Thing Happened on a Way to the Forum. At 14 years old, she was already performing at open mics and jazz bars, with her mom acting as her chaperone, of course. In 2003, at 17 years old, she was one of 20 people worldwide to have received an early acceptance into the Collaborative Arts Project 21 in the Tisch School of the Arts at New York University. The project, commonly referred to as CAP 21, is a professional musical theater training school and off-Broadway theater company where lots of stars have their roots, such as Anne Hathaway and Kristen Bell. In 2005, she dropped out of school after only three semesters at NYU, wanting to pursue music music as a career and become a star. After dropping out of school, her father made a deal that he would cover rent for a few months, but then she had to pull through on her own. She moved from her NYU dorm to an apartment on the Lower East Side. She performed at clubs in New York City with her band, the Stephanie Germanata Band, also known as SGB, that she'd started with some friends while she was going to NYU. She was on a mission to get a deal before her dad's cutoff date on her rent, which was set to expire in March of 2016, on Stephanie's 20th birthday. But one week before the cutoff date, her life completely changed forever. The SBG performed at the Cutting Room near Midtown Manhattan. It was there that she met Wendy Starland, who was a talent scout. Starlin was working with producer Rob Fusari on some tracks. Rob was known for his success with R&B hits for Destiny's Child and Will Smith. He was interested in finding a female singer to front a band and the female singer would end up being Stephanie Germanata, although with one small change, no band this time. Rob would often sing Queen's Radio Gaga whenever Stephanie would walk into his recording studio and thus the Lady Gaga moniker was born. Now as Lady Gaga, she held a showcase where she played Beautiful Dirty Rich, a song about her friends from NYU asking their dads for money. She was then invited to the record label, Island Def Jam Music Group, and this is where Antonio L.A. Reed, the CEO of the company, called Gaga a star. Not long after, in the fall of 2006, she signed a deal with Island Def Jam, which unfortunately only lasted a few months before she was dropped from the label. This was one of the only moments in her life that Gaga thought she might not become a star that she was meant to be. In a New York Magazine article from 2010, she was quoted saying, I went back to my apartment on the Lower East Side and I was so depressed. That's when I started the real devotion to my music and art. Rob Fusari and Gaga ended up dating from May 2006 to January of 2007. After Rob, she fell in love with a drummer, Luke Carl, who was also the manager at St. Jerome's, a rock bar near the Lower East Side. There, Gaga ended up meeting Lady Starlight, who was also a performer. 
The two started performing together in venues across the city, and Starlight was the one who influenced Gaga to incorporate more burlesque elements into her shows. Eventually, Gaga's look was no longer the leggings and sweatshirts that sometimes exposed one shoulder. She was performing on a stage in her underwear, sometimes even lighting her G-string on fire. Gaga was taking things to the next level and making herself an original. Although Lady Starlight had helped her form more of who she was, it was Andy Warhol who helped her shape the star. Eventually, because Andy was among her major influences, Gaga started the House of Gaga, a collective of creative people to help her brand similar in style to Warhol's factory. The House was a personal creative team that's been responsible for creating most of the clothing, props, stage sets, and makeup, basically all of the visuals, for Gaga's performances. It's comprised of artists, clothing designers, stage designers, and sound artists. 2007 was a whirlwind for Gaga's career. Gaga and Starlight ended up having their own show, called Lady Gaga and Starlight Revue. It was a pop burlesque show that paid tribute to the icons and musics of the 70s. They also ended up opening up for glam rockers known as semi-precious weapons. Even though Gaga and Rob were no longer together, he was still looking out for her career. In the spring of 2007, his friend Vincent Herbert landed a deal with Interscope Geffen A&M Records to sign new artists under a joint label, Streamline Records label. After a call, Gaga was in Los Angeles to meet with Jimmy Iovine, the head of Interscope. After listening to a few of Gaga's songs, he said, let's try this. Herbert sent Gaga to Lollapalooza Music Festival that summer, where she performed with Starlight. Before the platinum blonde Gaga was born, her hair was long and black, and she usually sported bangs. Apparently, someone in the audience at Lollapalooza said she looked a lot like Amy Winehouse, so she was immediately told by Vincent to dye her hair to differentiate her and become recognizable. While she was signed with Interscope, she also got a deal with Sony ATV Music Publishing, which can be credited to an internship she had at the famous music publishing years ago. After Jody Gerson signed her publishing deal, Gaga started writing music for big stars, such as Fergie, Britney Spears, The Pussycat Dolls, and New Kids on the Block. Whenever she was asked if it was hard for her to be creating music for others, but not necessarily making it for herself yet, she said it wasn't. Gaga said to The Independent in 2009, I got real joy from hearing Britney Spears sing my melodies. As much as I can sit here and talk about art, there's still something quite remarkable about writing a song when you're 20 and hearing a pop superstar sing it. Eventually, Akon ended up being a big factor in her break. He convinced Jimmy to let Gaga sign to his Con Live distribution record label. At the same time that she was writing songs for some of the big names out in the music industry, she was working on songs of her own. She worked with Red One, a Moroccan-Swedish international record producer and executive. All the tracks on Gaga's first album, The Fame, were written during their collaboration when she flew to LA to grind it out. And it only took them one week. Let's just say they must have been inspired. Martin Kersenbaum, an American songwriter, wrote four songs on the album. In a Billboard article from 2009, he said that Gaga is very focused and very fast. She doesn't like to sit around and waste time. When we tracked the Fame album, she sang everything in one take and spent about five hours on the harmonies. After Gaga and Martin collaborated on the album for only one week, Gaga signed to Martin's own record label, which is also under Interscope, called Cherry Tree Records, which he created back in 2004. By 2008, Gaga had moved to Los Angeles to be able to work on completing her debut album. In the meantime, her love life was on the rocks. Gaga and Luke would no longer be together the day that Gaga's Just Dance music video was shot. She finally left him after he doubted that she would make it big, and she vowed that she would. This was obviously not the support Gaga wanted. She needed someone to believe in her, just like she believed in herself. The Fame was released on August 19th of 2008, and that was the beginning of the rest of Gaga's career. The album and the tracks on it immediately took off. They all reached number one in at least three countries, and the album even won Best Dance Electronica Album at the 52nd Annual Grammy Awards. So yes, clearly she proved Luke wrong, and the lady now was a Grammy-winning artist. During the New Kids on the Block Live tour, which lasted from 2008 to 2010, Gaga made appearances at select venues in North America. In 2009, Gaga was the opening act for the Pussycat Dolls Doll Domination Tour. Right after this is when she headlined her worldwide The Fame Ball Tour, from March to September of 2009. 
so while on tour, she wrote new songs for the fame monster. This album was an EP and released on November 18th of 2009, featuring eight new songs. From her album, her tracks kept hitting all-time highs and breaking records. The video for Bad Romance became the most-watched video YouTube in 2010. It also ended up being the award-winning Best Female Pop Vocal Performance and Best Short Form Music Video at the 53rd Grammys, where the Fame Monster won the Grammy for Best Pop Vocal Album. At the 2010 MTV Video Music Awards, she won eight awards from 13 nominations, including Video of the Year for Bad Romance. And these awards, she also wore her infamous meat dress, lest us never forget the meat dress. Talk about making history in an iconic way. With this album, she went on her second tour, the Monster Ball Tour, which ran for a year and a half from November 2009 to May 2011. This tour also broke records in true Gaga style. It was the biggest tour ever by a debut headlining artist. It was also the highest grossing tour by a debut headlining artist. Over the next few years, she released four more studio albums, Born This Way, released in 2011, Art Pop, released in 2013, a collaborative jazz album with Tony Bennett titled Cheek to Cheek, which was released in 2014, and Joanne, released in 2016. A bit more on the personal side of things, in February of 2015, she was engaged to Taylor Kinney, her boyfriend of about four years. The pair split in July of the same year, with Gaga saying it was because of her career. More recently, in October of 2018, she became engaged to Kristen Carino, a talent agent after the pair had been dating for about two years. There was also a reinvention of Lady Gaga's image at the wake of Art Pop's disappointing receival. Instead of the crazy costumes and wigs and so on, she went through a six-month period of reinvention. From then on, she's been the classic, beautiful, and elegant Lady Gaga we all know and love in 2018. With her acting background from Lee Strasberg, back when she was just Stephanie, she had auditioned for parts in New York City's acting scene, but didn't get any roles. She did, however, get a small cameo role in an episode of season three of The Sopranos as a high school student. Now, as Lady Gaga, she played and won awards for her roles on American Horror Stories in season five and six. Most recently, in 2018, Gaga has acted alongside Bradley Cooper in a remake of the 1937 film A Star Is Born. She and Bradley co-wrote and produced 19 of the songs on the 34-song track for the movie. She was quoted by Billboard in 2018, having told The Hollywood Reporter Actress Roundtable about her feelings towards the role. She said, I felt really excited and really ready for this part. It was a sanctuary of trust, and so when I saw that trust with Bradley, I said, okay, I'm going to have to become someone that I do not have complete control over. And while she loved playing Allie, she did say, I still feel like I'm recovering from playing this role. In 2015, Lady Gaga performed the U.S. National Anthem at the Super Bowl 50. Two years later, in 2017, she was the headlining act for the halftime show, where she had lit up drones in an aerial performance for the first time ever at a Super Bowl halftime show. This almost broke the record for the most viewership ever for a halftime show, where more people were watching Gaga than the actual game. In 2017, Lady Gaga had a documentary put out on Netflix titled Gaga, 5 Foot 2. Throughout her career, Lady Gaga has been an LGBTQ advocate and has come out as bisexual years ago, while she was still with Luke Carl at the time. She has also been very open about her love of being androgynous. And of course, there was a time when fans even thought maybe she was a hermaphrodite, which has now been concluded as a rumor. Gaga not only helps LGBTQ communities, but supports other causes as well. Gaga created a lipstick with MAC Cosmetics to raise funds towards the MAC AIDS Fund. Though all is bright now for Lady Gaga, it hasn't always been an easy rise to the top. Lady Gaga has been very transparent with her PTSD that came from having been raped at 19 years old. She then went through extensive therapy to help her heal from the trauma. In light of this, she spent a lot of time and dedicated many performances to people, and women in particular, who have suffered from sexual assault. So if you're not convinced yet that Lady Gaga is the queen of pop, literally, she was even given this title in 2011 by Rolling Stones magazine. Gaga has been in the music industry for over a decade now, grinding every step of the way and inspiring fans to believe in themselves. She's proven herself as a singer, a songwriter, a musician, a performer, an artist, and even a fashion icon. Her presence in the music industry is an important and influential one. Her rise to fame hasn't been an easy one, but all has been worth it for Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanata. 
She was born a star, and the star is Lady Gaga. So do you think Lady Gaga really is one of the world's biggest stars? What's your favorite Lady Gaga moment? Let us know in the comment section below. Once again, please like this video and subscribe to the Talko to get more cool content. See you all next time.